do if your puppy has something he's not supposed to have? Do you A, run after him and take it out of his mouth, or B, give him the whole cheese drawer from the fridge to get him to drop it, or C, let him eat it and get on speed dial with your vet? Or do you head to the YouTube channel and ask your favorite dog trainer? Well, you're in luck because after you watch this video, you're gonna know the right thing to do. Now, before we begin, if you don't already have this amazing free resource for new puppy owners, you've gotta get it. It's not the topic of today's video, but it has a lot of base level information on raising well-mannered, confident puppies. So be sure to grab it and you will have a good foundation of knowledge too. The link to it and everything else I talk about is below. Now, on to today's topic. Puppies who are vacuum cleaners. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. I get this question a lot. How do you get the puppy to leave things alone? First, let's get inside the head of those creatures so we can better understand them. Now, I want you to keep in mind that puppy curiosity is normal and it's usually a good sign. Curious puppy leads to a confident puppy who is interested in the world. Confidence leads to less reactivity when it comes to other dogs or joggers or strollers or new things. Now you wanna encourage that confidence, but in a way that doesn't make your puppy sick or cause harm. So before we get going with these great suggestions, I just wanna point out one difference in the case of a more serious medical condition. When talking about puppies who are picking up everything and putting it in their mouth, we aren't talking about pica. Pica is a condition where dogs consistently eat objects that are not food items. Now a dog needs to ingest the item, not just chew on it for it to be considered pica. Pica is typically considered a psychological obsessive compulsive habit but it can be the result of a medical condition or poor nutrition. Now, if all medical conditions have been ruled out and compulsive behavior is suspected, it's often recommended that your dog be seen by a board certified veterinary behaviorist or behavior therapist for dogs. Most young puppies are simply curious and are not displaying pica behavior. But if you're watching this video and you have an older dog who consumes a lot of foreign objects, you might ask your vet about pica. Okay, let's get going on our tips for those curious pups who pick up everything and put it in their mouth. Number one, have patience. <laughs> for a puppy, this exploration with their mouth is normal and developmentally healthy. Now, it may not be physically healthy though, so you're gonna do what we do with a lot of puppy behaviors. We are going to redirect the puppy to a similar behavior, but in a healthy way. Now, you've heard me say to keep your patience high and your expectations low. But in the case of a puppy who's eating everything, we're gonna keep patients high and prevention even higher. Now more on that in just a minute. This leads me to tip number two, provide opportunities for this natural exploration. Now I know it sounds counterintuitive and you might be thinking that by giving them opportunities to explore with his mouth, we're actually encouraging the dog to explore more. But I promise you that if he gets to do it in a way that's healthy, he's less likely to do it in a way that's not. So I want you to set up opportunities for your dog to explore. Now, this could be a new room in your house where you go exploring with a puppy on a leash. It could be a busy box of a new item that he's never seen before, or it could be a sniff box of things that he wants to eat, but he shouldn't. Now a sniff box has holes in the top but he can't put things in, that are in it in his mouth. This way you can bring in things from outside for all that interesting sniffing. Now, check out this comment that one of my students made recently in my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon. We had received the question about how to get the pup to stop eating stones and Nadine commented on the post. She said, my German Shepherd Callie was an attempted stone eater and I have decorative stones outside. While working on Leave It, I had her on a lead for all toilet breaks and any time she was outside. I also interacted with her and made myself the most interesting thing. So she literally got no chance to fixate on the stones and rehearse the behavior of picking them up. She also says, I also planted dog friendly herbs so that she could enjoy sniffing those. Now she can sniff the stones and walk right past them and hasn't attempted to touch them in about a month. 
There's so much that I love about this suggestion. Nadine helped prevent the behavior from happening by using a leash and keeping her dog's attention on her. Now she gave Callie other opportunities to sniff, interesting things, and she was consistent and patient. Excellent work. Now we have even more tips for you, so let's keep going. Tip number three has us thinking more about things into the future. We will begin some training, but keep our expectations low and our patience high. So tip number three is to begin work on leave it, just like Nadine suggested. Leave it is a skill that requires a dog to go against their natural instinct and move away from something that they want. Now this means it has to be practiced a lot <laughs> in order for it to become a habit. You're gonna wanna start with easy things that your pup doesn't mind leaving and use high value treats so he gets motivated to listen to you. The games for Leave It and its cousin Drop It are in my online course. And if you're not already enrolled, that's gonna be something you should seriously consider. And not just because I created it, but because over 7,000 students are loving it. Okay, on to tip number four. Prevent unwanted behaviors from happening. So tip number two taught us that we're gonna allow the behavior in a structured and safe environment. And now we wanna prevent it from happening in an area that we don't want. And if your puppy is faster than you when out for potty breaks, one of the best things you can do is get an outdoor puppy pen. I'm gonna give you the link to one of those, the ones that we'd like, in the description below this video. You can just set it up in a spot that's been cleared of all the leaves or other tempting items. And this will help your puppy focus on the task and prevent him from making this behavior a habit. For indoor prevention, be sure to use a crate for nights and naps and when you're away from your home. And use some puppy proofing or an indoor pen for when you're not able to supervise your pup when he's awake. Now, if you picked up on the leash in the earlier comment from Nadine, that leads me to tip number five, leash skills. But let's make sure that we're on the same page here with the use of the leash. Now, if you were thinking that we'll just use the leash to physically pull the puppy away from sticks or other interesting items, you're incorrect. The leash is like a seatbelt, not a steering wheel. Now, it's only used when in an emergency. The real MVP is your training, where you teach your puppy what you want them to do while on a leash. We recommend using a leash for training sessions, even when they are not specifically leash skills. Because when you use a leash for training consistently, your dog is more likely to be tuned into you and pay attention to your cues. This is just like how service dogs know they're working when wearing their vests. Same concept. Okay, who's loving this info? Are you getting a lot of ideas about how you can work on this frustrating behavior with your puppy? If you love it, show it. <laughs> Give us a share, a like, a subscribe, or just leave us a super thanks. Dogs aren't the only ones who benefit from positive reinforcement. Dog trainers do too. All right. On to tip number six, find good spots for your walks. So in addition to pens and gates and other ways to prevent the behavior from happening, it's also best to choose your walking location carefully. So we recommend places like parking lots, tennis courts, or sports fields for Hoover-like puppies. Now you're gonna be able to see any tempting sticks or rocks or rabbit poo that might be in your path. And you can redirect your puppy to a different location. Now you might be thinking, parking lots, really? But believe me, parking lots are interesting enough for your dog. There are a lot of scents on the parking lot pavement. Now, they're only boring to humans. So just be sure the pavement isn't too hot for your dog to walk on. Now, if you can't leave the back of your palm on the pavement for more than 10 seconds, then it's not safe for your pup to walk on. All right, on to tip number seven. You're gonna love this one because you might already know this game and you can use it in a lot of different situations. So tip number seven is, Teach your puppy the puppy pivot game. Now this is a game that we share inside our new puppy starter kit. This is something that you can teach your dog as soon as he comes home. Now this means that before he's ready for the leave it cue, you're gonna teach him to respond to a sound that you make. We want the pup to pivot or pause when he hears the sound because he knows good things are happening. This game is also a great one for humans to develop some great habits in communicating with their pups. All right, here's how we teach this game. Now, I want you to come up with a noise that you're going to use to get your puppy's attention. I recommend the kissy noise or clicking of your tongue. I recommend noise over a word such as the word no because humans have a tendency to use the word with harsh tones like no. <laughs> your first step will be to load up the noise. So this means you're gonna make the noise and offer a treat. You're gonna repeat this about five to 10 times, and each time you make the noise, 
deliver the treat immediately. Now you're gonna to wanna to do this in a non-distracting environment and in very short sessions to really cement in that it's an important noise to your dog. Now you can tell if your dog is getting the hang of the game because when you make the noise, he's gonna immediately look at that treat hand. Now that means he knows that good things are gonna happen when the noise is present. That's great. <laughs> this means you can move on to step number two, practice in neutral settings. That means you're gonna find good opportunities to continue to practice this noise when your dog has the greatest chance of success. Now, I want you to check out the new puppy starter kit for the puppy pivot game and the step-by-step -step set of instructions to teach the skill to your puppy. The skill really is super useful. So for example, when Pickles, my dog, heads for my shoe, all I have to do is make the kissing noise and he immediately heads in another direction. I don't have to yell, live it! <laughs> I don't have to run after him or try to grab his collar. So that's the benefit of this and other training games. Your dog knows what to expect. All right, I do have a bonus tip for you if you used every one of these tips in today's video and your dog is still getting into things. A comfortable and well-fitting muzzle. I actually think that all dogs should be trained to happily tolerate a muzzle. Now, I recently had a question from a fan about a muzzle because she was moving to an island and the ferry to the mainland required all dogs to wear a muzzle. And another commenter mentioned that the public transportation where she lived had a similar policy. Muzzles aren't bad. They're just another tool, but they must be sized correctly for the comfort and safety of your dog, and they must be desensitized to it. We like the Muzzle Up Project because they teach you how to choose the best one and how to help your dog get used to it. You can find them here. All right, that was a whole lot of information all at once, but you have the critical thinking human brain and I believe in you. And if you're ready to implement these suggestions, you can get started today. And if you're ready for the training games, check out the link below to my online course. In addition to leave it and drop it, You'll get leash skill games and games to teach recall or the come cue and some help with frustrating behaviors like biting and jumping. And you're gonna get some awesome lessons on canine communication and body language. And with no expiration date, you can take it at the pace that works best for your dog. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you have any questions and we'll help you along. All right, until next time, this is your favorite certified puppy trainer signing off.